so we are going to talk about mental health awareness in which we will go for the mental health of the students how we uh, uh, about the most of the issues we face during the sessions the academic sessions and uh, the uh, possible uh, support options my screen is isn't moving right now problem yes so how do we define it mental health mental health refers to a person's a person's emotional psychological and social well-being encompassing their thoughts feelings and behavior it affects how individuals think feel and act and versus how they handle stress make choices and relate to others mental health is essential at every stage of life from childhood and adolescence to the childhood so this is this conversation is going to be a bit uh, sensitive and a sort of mature conversation we are going to have mental health basically composed of different aspects in which we uh, first we see emotional well being component psychological component social component resilience absence of mental health uh, absence of mental illness balance and well groundedness self care so we are going to talk about one by one about these aspects of the mental health so emotional well being means uh, it involves understanding and managing emotions effectively it is uh, we are going to talk here about the eq in the emotional well being it includes experiencing a wide range of emotions such as happiness sadness anger fear and joy and being to able to uh, being able to express and regulate them appropriately so these are the emotional components of the mental health feeling happy sad feeling angry feeling fearful or joyful and able to express your thoughts and emotions these are our perfectly normal emotional components of a uh, mentally uh, healthy person so we are going to talk about the psychological well-being of a person it, it, this is aspect encompasses cognitive abilities and functioning so the psychological component of mental health mainly composed of the functioning and cognitive abilities of person how a person approaches to uh, different things like uh, approaches to his interaction his social interactions his so called his cognitive abilities his problem solving abilities so it involves having a positive self perception maintaining a realistic perspective on life so that if a person is uh, good in mental health he will uh, his, his cognitive abilities are normal he will have a realistic approach to life he will not be making decisions about some sort of delusions or hallucinations uh, if he is having any because that's not normal and possessing the ability to solve the problems and make decisions and think critically so this is not some sort of lecture uh, to you know uh, to cram like one by one line each this is more about we are going to understand it uh, how a mental health composed of uh, which components and how these components if deranged uh, lead to mental health uh, derangement and which ultimately leads to the mental illness or psychiatric illnesses which are of different kinds so the next component is social well being mental health includes social interactions and relationships these uh, two are most important uh aspect of mental health because if a person gets uh, ill mentally or if he gets depressed due to any reason he is having so he uh, he uh, you know uh, if a person remains depressed for a while he will become antisocial and he uh, his relationships get troubled either he is living with their parents with his spouse his or her spouse with the children so so relationship or uh, relationship get really hard and his social interactions get really weird or he uh, sometimes isolate himself he or she it involves establishing a maintaining healthy relationship having empathy for others and contributing to the society so social well being also includes having empathy for others and contributing to the society uh, having no empathy for others is thought of uh, a bit of a derangement from the normal mental health having empathy for others 
and contributing to society or having uh, playing a positive role to the society is normal and it's uh, a social component of the mental health social support and a sense of belonging are crucial for mental health and well-being so these emotional well-being psychological well-being and social well-being these three are the most important components of the mental health so if any of them gets deranged that person is clearly going through something or he has any of mental or psychiatric illness so he need uh, she or she need to see a psychologist psychiatric or any medical doctor to uh, uh, you know uh, to discuss about whatever he is going through his uh, either he is having any symptoms we will talk about the symptoms and signs later on in the next slide so resilience resilience refers to the ability to cope with life challenges and adapt to challenges and bounce back from adversity resilience means uh, staying stoic or staying strong either uh, high if we are having a really rough time in life uh, so uh, the normal mental health uh, allows us to face that challenge or cope up with that challenge adapt to uh, the changes we are having or if we are having the rough, the through a rough time we adapt so, you know we will take different measures to uh, cope up with that situation and bounce back from adversity or uh, the hard time we are having we will find a solution and bounce back from that so uh, resilience is sort of staying strong in uh, every situation either it's really really hard or it's uh, sort of if it's sort of uh, some sort of grief some sort of loss in the business loss of a family member so dealing with that loss and coming back from it is uh, a resilience which is also a component of mental health a mentally healthy individual is more likely to have strong resilience allowing them to navigate stressful situations and bounce back effectively if a person is perfect normally his mental health is good so if he uh, he or she faces any stress any psychological uh, illness in later on he will uh, he will you know bounce back quickly or either if he uh, faces any sort of a uh, challenge in life uh, so he or she will find a way to navigate through the stressful situation and bounce back normal so absence of mental health uh, mental illness emotional well being psychological social and resilience these are also components of mental health now we are uh, we are talking about men- absence of mental illness so this is a very uh, you know a dynamic concept about the uh, if we talk about mental illnesses there is no uh, strict criteria either we define it a person mentally ill or a, a, per- a person who is clearly uh, normal or have no psychiatric illness this is uh, you know a dy- dynamic condition in which a person may have a perfect physical health but going through some mental illness a person have uh, uh, some having some sort of uh, health issues but he is mentally okay so this is a very dynamic situation if we speak of psychiatric illnesses but each of them should be treated uh, should be treated uh, either through the therapy so for psychotherapy or either psychotherapy so uh, it should not be taken lightly because if these diseases get old or sort of chronic they uh, they get uh, you know sort of resistant to uh, treat so absence of mental illness uh, mental illness encompasses the absence of mental disorders or illnesses mental illnesses are medical conditions that are pers- that affect a person's thinking either these diseases affect a uh, person's thinking a person's mood person's behavior and overall functioning example include depression depression is a sort of psychiatric illness anxiety is another type of psychiatric illness bipolar disorder schizophrenia and eating disorders these topics are sort of very sensitive but uh, you know we are going uh, we will go through each of them uh, for awareness purpose but n- not too much still next is balance and well roundedness mental health is not just about the absence of mental illness but also about maintaining a sense of balance and well roundedness in life so this uh, situation if a person is not uh, normal he is healthy is physically okay his mental health is uh, good so he will have a balance in his life all well rounded in his life he will not go uh, to the extremes either he is too much happy 
uh, or then he goes to uh, a too much sad period or too much depressed period so these are two extremes either uh, he's uh, totally happy or either he is totally sad no in between so balance is very important in normal life if a person is mentally not okay he will having these sort of extremes it involves pursuing meaningful goals engaging in fulfilling activities and achieving a healthy work balance life work life balance hello dr yes. muhammad there, there, yeah. there's a there's a question in chat can you please explain bipolar disorder yes i will uh, explain these this is in the next slide please wait okay thank you self care taking self care of one's mental health involves practicing self self care strategies this may include engaging in activities that promote relaxation stress management reflection such as exercise meditation therapy maintaining healthy relationships setting boundaries and seeking support when needed so this one is also a very important uh, uh, component of normal mental health self care some of uh, sometimes people get too much involved with their work or their academics so they neglect their uh, uh, their own self care or their self care so um, either they are not exercising at all they are not uh, you know uh, socializing much they are not doing uh, any uh, activities or they do not engage in uh, uh, interactions or healthy relationships they do not meditate or so self care is also a very important component of the mental health uh, to you know uh, to cope up with the challenges of everyday life either uh, going through the stress so these were the components of uh, normal mental health uh, we uh, we saw about the emotional well being psychological well being social well being resilience absence, absence of mental illness balance and well roundedness self care these are not sort of things to you know cram but is, uh, you guys should have a general idea what a, a mental health a normal person should be uh, you know behaving in uh, these different aspects uh, or how they should be like so this session aims and learning outcomes the well being and health of uh, ai university uh, community members is uh, a shared responsibility so i think this session is not just a routine lecture it is more a uh, awareness session so it's more a responsibility to uh, if i have a knowledge about these diseases or these uh, mental health uh, issues i am uh, going to speak about it if you any of you has uh, know how about this topic you should uh, you know spread the word about it to uh, spread the awareness about it to uh, help your friends your uh, your family if any of them going through this situation they should see a doctor a psychologist or a psychiatrist so this kind of sessions are really important so uh, pay heed to it it is crucial for uh, to be prepared for emergency while acknowledging such instances in infrequent and expert assistance is readily accessible so it is not uncommon that we face emotional and psychological challenges in everyday life so these situations should be addressed uh and it should not be taken lightly if a person is feeling uh, low or uh, drained for a long uh, for example if a person is uh, you know goes to uh, a grief uh, he uh, or she a person suppose lost is a family member the grief is definitely a coping mechanism for that lost loved one so if a person uh, stays in that grief for months you know uh, Uh, every day we learn how to uh, you know move on from the certain situations we can't stay in uh, past forever this uh, condition is going to be you know too long if we uh, uh, talk about this thing but you know moving on is a normal uh, coping mechanism one should uh, definitely move on either from any kind of grief even after if you uh, if you are feeling any sort of grief or any sort of you know fear or any sort of uh, strong uh, negative emotion fear is not negative uh, grief is not negative but if they you know persist for too long if they take months they uh, make you feel drained you cannot do normal 
uh, you know, uh, uh, normal chores of the routine, you do not uh, doing well in the academic, so you should get these checks because this is not normal. And optimum stress is uh, stress or grief is that you do not feel okay for a while, like for days, for a few weeks, and you eventually recover. If you're not recovering uh, within days or the week, then something is definitely wrong. You should take or uh, you should uh, seek help. So this presentation's objective are to increase awareness about mental health issues, to aid in identifying when a student may be struggling, to offer advice on appropriate and effective responses or referrals, to remind you of support resources available within the university or outside the university. So we will see next about details. So student mental health. The main focus of this presentation is to focus on the uh, student's mental health. There are other aspects as well, like uh, different situations, different relationships, like uh, spouse mental health, like parent child mental health. So we are talk going to talk uh, mostly about student mental health. Half of all young adults will access uh, higher education by the time they are 30. So uh, from the, uh, you know, uh, era of three to four years onwards to the 30s. So mostly uh, people are, you know, in the phase of academic uh, stress. So a significant uh, group uh, within the young adult population and as many numbers have grown, the population increasing resembles the wider young adult population. It's diverse in practice. So as day by day, we are seeing uh, in the stats, in the studies, in the different, you know, uh, trials of, uh, you know, collective, if we collect different, you know, uh, data from the different universities of all over the world. So you will see a, def uh, a specific age group of the adults, like from the early 20s or the late teenage to the late 20s, there is a, you know, a decade of, uh, in which mostly people suffer from a lot of things. They go through a family stress, they do go through the stress of the relationship, they go through financial crisis. So a lot of uh, things going on in their, this, you know, bracket of life. So university students are of, uh, lie among that age gap in which this, these circumstances are going on. So students' mental health problems are more likely to experience disruption to their education through taking off time, attempting to continue their studies without the support they need or dropping out altogether. So it is very important if a student is going through some, uh, you know, serious mental health problems, they are definitely going to experience disruption in their education or in their academic, uh, you know, uh, progress. They will be uh, showing the least interest in their studies or they will be, uh, you know, uh, having uh, poor grades or they are dropping out. So this is not something they can uh, they are doing on their own. Some of them might do, but if the person if the person is have uh, if a person have a diagnosed problem and this is not in their hands to you know skip classes or skip lessons or they have poor grades, they definitely need help and they definitely uh, need a adequate space or a specific a period of time to heal and uh, to you know recover from this situation they are going through and. Uh, get back to studies instead, uh, you know, uh, dropping out or taking time off or poor grades or even not trying to go to classes. So this is a very important topic that students should, should uh, they should, you know, pay attention to. And if they are going through anything, they should talk about it to their teachers, to their parents, to their colleagues, to their friends. So this is very important if they get into it. So the number of students, Students to drop out university with mental health problem has more than uh, trebled in the recent years. Official figures show a 200, 210% increase. So these studies say that 210% students drop out from the university, uh, you know, every year uh, because of the mental health problems. They do not get appreciated. They do not pay attention what, to whatever they are going through. So they, uh, you know, their carelessness leads to this situation. You are uh, seeing any of your uh, colleague that is distressed, go talk to him or if, uh, you know, if you are going through something, talk about it to your friends or your family or your teachers. So this is very important to talk about it or get it treated. So these are stats from a study uh, uh, conducted in the UK universities. Uh, a bit, this is a bit older uh, stats from 2000.
2007 to 2017, uh, 2.3 million students studying at UK universities are important mental health population with, uh, with distinctive characteristic and vulnerabilities. There is a limited direct evidence for the student mental health. The most reliable data is provided by proxy measure of disclosure and demand for services. So this is a very, uh, you know, uh, 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 important study conduct, uh, conducted uh, on the students, university students of the UK. And uh, uh, this during this study, proper measures were taken. The number of students disclosing mental health condition to their higher education institution is increasing. As the awareness goes on, the students, uh, you know, definitely start talking about uh, to their parents, to the teachers. Uh, they start, you know, uh, start seeking help. If you do not know what is uh, wrong with you, you do, do not, you know, uh, uh, talk about, you cannot talk about it, you cannot seek help about it. If you, uh, you uh, have awareness, you know, if you know about certain uh, psychiatric issues, if you go through any of if you are going through any of it you will definitely talk about you will definitely seek help about it if you do not know what's going on with you you cannot seek help you know if you do not know about that thing uh, uh, this is a, a very uh, uh, you know vast topic if we talk about there are religious aspects as well there are cultural aspects as well so in many cultures these psychiatric issues are taken as you know sort of uh, they are mixed with possession possessions or you know sort of uh, uh, epilepsy or schizophrenia they are you know uh, mostly mostly uh, diagnosed wrong or misplaced or uh, they are you know it is uh, pretty much messed up if in the you know uh, developing countries or uh, if the education the population is not very much educated so their superstitious beliefs uh, uh, led them to, you know, diagnose that uh, either if a person is having epilepsy or schizophrenia, it is some sort of demonic possession or something wrong is going on. Or so, so they mix up this thing uh, with with the religious beliefs or whatever they think about that. So it is very important to to get it diagnosed to get it checked by healthcare professionals. So these stats say that 2007 to 2008 post graduate students uh, were diagnosed, 1,260 post graduate students were diagnosed, and 8,415 undergraduate students were diagnosed with a mental health issue. In 2010 to 2011 bracket, post graduate, uh, 2,185 uh, post graduate students were uh, you know, diagnosed with mental health issues in undergraduate, 14,325. So this is a very big number. And you can see this number is increasing in mostly uh, undergraduate level students, like uh, uh, aging from the early 20s to the mid 20s, uh, 2014, uh, 13 to 14, uh, 3,925 postgraduate students, 25,000 undergraduate students were diagnosed with mental health, mental health issues, 2016 to 2017, 8,000 postgraduate students were diagnosed, and uh, 49,265. This is a very exponential number here that it is uh, 8,000, 14,000, 25,000, uh, 49,000. So you can see these, uh, these, this incidence is really increasing in the uh, university students uh, of this age bracket. So student uh, population, if we speak about, you know, uh, different uh, uh, factors uh, about the uh, uh, mental health issues, if we speak of age, we speak of the amount of the stress, we speak uh, about the lack of support or resources and other factors. So age, our population of students are under 25 and around three quarters of adults with a mental illness have their first episode before turning 25. So this is uh, mostly uh, this uh, spectrum of the most mental health issues are uh, based on the early 20s to the late 20s but it is not negligible in the teenagers or in the puberty. A uh, lot of female teenagers go through a lot of psychiatric issues during their puberty. A lot of teen male uh, teenagers also go through uh, whenever. Uh, so a lot of factors, you know, uh, contribute to this uh, situation, either hormones, either psychological factors or social factors, or their, you know, living conditions, or the household sort of environment they're living in. So uh, the incidence 
uh, of mood anxiety psychotic personality eating and substance use disorder peak in adolescence and early adulthood so uh, there is also you know a, a, a factor which we cannot uh, uh, neglect or ignore is drug abuse so uh, there is there are different you know uh, drugs available or uh, teenagers do it for you know uh, recreational purposes that they uh, start doing drugs so many of them are uh, you know food elevators or uh, they definitely uh, you know disrupt normal uh, functioning of the body normal hormone balance of the brain so they most of them lead to uh, either depression or psychological other uh, psychological issues 50% of the mental health problems are established by age 14 and 75 by the age 24 so uh, these are the uh, this uh, is a data i you know uh, collected from different studies that 50% of most of the uh, problems are established by the age 14 it starts from the uh, 14 years of age and reach to the maximum uh, to, uh, by the 24 uh, it is 75% so this uh, age like of um, uh, i am you know uh, beyond that age so i have been to uh, these ages i can understand a lot of things going on in uh, life in the in the life of the um, uh, teenagers a lot of things go on in the early 20s so oh, d- dr mohammed there there is yes, a question yes. what does it mean pg and ug pg stands for post graduate and ug stands for undergraduate okay uh, next is stress becoming a student can be stressful experience although stress isn't a mental health problem it can lead to mental health problems like depression and anxiety stress is a normal response to any this uh, any any distress condition like if anyone is having exams or an important event to attend or if uh, they are having you know a very important day stress is normal this is called optimum stress that we uh, you know uh, feel a bit of pressure uh, behind our head that uh, it is very important a day very important day or very important exam or a very important meeting so uh, the person feels a bit of pressure so this is optimum stress but if that stress long for too uh, for too much days or for too much week uh, if a person is having panic attack if he had you know previous experience uh, like any of uh, a uh, traumatic experience in the past but is having you know a panic attack about that experience after like months or years this is not normal this is not stress this is definitely depression or anxiety going on within him this is uh, not normal but uh, having a little stress before exam before an important day before an important event is totally normal it is called optimum stress lack of support students may have uh, left home for the first time uh, most of the them get bored or they away from the family and friends so uh, there is a factor of you know homesickness as well they also you know get vulnerable to the uh, different type of circles uh, their their, comp- their you know company uh, leads them to anywhere uh, either they they, uh, they do not have a uh, emotional support or they are feeling low they definitely seek attention they will go for anything or any person that you know make them feel attended so their problem gets started when a person gets dependent on either uh, either this or get dependent on a person uh, but that's not too much uh, you know they get too much uh, dependent on someone they get too much dependent on drugs so this is a very problematic uh, thing for the teenagers or the students of younger age when they left uh, when they leave home for the first time or they become bored so their proper awareness and education uh, or mentoring is very important for them you know to help them uh, get up uh, get to solve these kind of situations so other factors involved in this prevalence of mental health within the student population is isolation drugs and alcohol uh, transient lifestyle lack of coping strategies change uh, maturational conflict financial pressures high expectations parents and competition for the job uh, poor housing academic expectations and deadlines coping with life events 
first in family report to university. So these are uh, all the factors we uh, cannot ignore any of it because they are very important and they definitely lead to uh, in one way or other way to the mental health issues. Like isolation, uh, too much isolation is not good. Too much alcohol is not good, and drug uh, drug abuse is definitely not good. Lifestyle, uh, you know, if you don't adapt to a certain place or environment, and you know, start as you are changing places a lot, that's not uh, you know healthy for your mental health as well. Uh, financial pressures, high expectations from the pa uh, parents as well, and the competition for the jobs in the twenties. These all are the very, you know, stressing things for the person. So uh, the mental health, emotional and spiritual resilience, which allows us to enjoy life and survive pain and disappointment and sadness. It's a positive sense of well-being and underlying belief in our own and other dignity and worth. So mental health is, uh, you know, uh, a balance uh, between our you know uh, highs and lows of our life it helps us to enjoy life and survive pain you know uh, to uh, if we have uh, achieved something so if a person is totally normal he, de he will definitely celebrate it if a person is going through something rough or having grief he will definitely uh, have pain for a while and then recover from it or bounce back from it it should be he should he or she should recover from it he or she should be recovered from the grief. That if the grief lasts, uh, lasts for too long, this is not normal. He or she should seek help. If a person sees or uh, you know experiences any of the traumatic experience, he should seek a psychologist and talk about it. Mental health influences how we feel about ourselves and others, and how we interpret the events that happen to us. It affects our capacity to love, communicate, form relationships deal with change, transitions, life events, etc. So mental health uh, is, uh, you know, uh, a situation or uh, our brain's ability to uh, how we feel about ourselves, how we feel about others, and how we communicate, how we learn, how we, you know, uh, deal with the relationships and deal with the change and different transitions or the dynamic state going on in our life. So. Our, uh, the next is our physical and the mental health being are closely linked. Uh, that if a person is totally healthy, he uh, either he is physically healthy and mentally healthy, if both of them are uh, good, so a person is completely healthy. If a person is going through some chronic illness like cancer or other disease that is you know, lasting for too long, the person, that person is, uh, you know, having definitely a uh, mental health issues as well because a person if that person is you know very bizarre of the disease of the uh, medicines going on about the emotional uh, you know uh, dependence and the uh, financial issues uh, financial pressure or financial load uh, of the disease uh, so that person definitely gets bizarre if these longs for too long so besides the main uh, treatment of the disease uh, that person should seek a psychologist or psychiatrist to uh, help them to this, uh, you know, traumatic experience. Most of the cancer patients uh, see, uh, seek psychologists or psychiatrists after their treatments because uh, cancer leaves sort of PTSD for traumatic stress uh, disorder. So they should seek a psychologist or psychiatrist. It is very important for them to heal. Uh, completely from the disease, completely from the situation, completely from that, you know, mental state of uh, uh, mental state of being sick. So if a, part, if a person stays sick for too long, it takes uh, he or she should, you know, take different measures to cope up with the different aspects of the mental health to, uh, you know, to recover from the physical health as well and to recover from the mental health issues as well. So the bizarreness uh, and the depression of that phase, the PTSD of that phase uh, should not last too long. So mental health problems are disturbances in the way people think, feel, and behave. Mental health conditions may have adverse effect on person's ability to carry out normal day-to-day -day activities. So these are different type of uh, health difficulties that students may uh, experience. More disorder that include depression, bipolar, anxiety and stress disorders, panic attacks, OCD, phobias, 
number 3 psychotic illness including schizophrenia number 4 eating disorder anorexia bulimia number 5 personality disorder self harm dual diagnosis so these are different type of uh, different categories of uh, you know diseases that can happen these are mental disorders so mood disorders include depression bipolar and these are vast categories and these uh, diseases have uh, sub type as well so this is a very vast topic so the mental health continuum this is a spectrum of the healthy and uh, a mentally ill patient uh, this is a healthy state in which a person can stay healthy uh, calm and steady normal function in the mood fluctuation in the mood fit and fed rested in control physically mentally emotionally performing well behaving ethically and morally socially active sense of humor relaxing and recreating confident in self and others so this is a very uh, healthy criteria of uh, criteria for a healthy person so the next stage is the reacting it is a very early stage of a mental health issues it, the next is injured and the very next is ill so the reacting in the reacting stage a person gets easily agitated anger frustrated and tired difficulty focusing decrease in interest in activities nervous impatient unusual sadness difficulty sleeping vigilance problem with daily functioning at home work or school so this is the reacting stage of uh, reacting stage of a mental health issue this is a very uh, you know basic stage from where the all the Uh, mental health issues or the psychiatric illnesses take to from the next one is injured stage persistent anxiety and sadness if a sad uh, if a sadness or anxiety or stress take uh, you know at uh, uh, long more than 3 weeks at least that's not normal that is converts into uh, that gets converted into different thing that's not a normal stress angry reactions noticeable streak this one is reacting stage in which person is uh, behaving abnormally only in the uh, you know uh, mentally uh, not well in the next stage the person gets physically sick as well the person has noticeable fatigue as well poor concentration inability to, to enjoy activities excessive distrust and resentment sleep disturbances person have uh, insomnia for many days hyper vigilance persistent physical symptoms like aches and pains a person may have uh, pain um, all over the body may have muscle pain or the bone pain or joint pain and a feeling of you know not well severe deterioration in daily functioning in home work or school so this is the stage next to the reacting stage in which the physical health of the person is also getting involved along with the mental health so the next stage is ill excessive anxiety fatigue and sadness regular panic attacks angry outbursts severe memory lapses cannot concentrate cannot perform daily routine activities uh, significant uh, sleep disturbances loss of control avoiding or withdrawal significant change in behavior indication of suicidal thoughts intention symptoms get worse over the time instead of the better so this this is a red flag or this is a very critical situation in which a person is uh, you know going to a very uh, advanced stage of the mental health issue or psychiatric illness he or she uh, have emergency help or uh, get hospitalized for the psychotherapy and pharmacotherapy both he should he or she should have uh, sessions with the psychologist and have medic uh, and have get prescriptions or prescribed antidepressants or anti uh, anxiety drugs from the uh, a doctor or from a psychiatrist so this is also another model uh, to portray the mental health so this arrow shows the maximum mental health minimum mental health this arrow shows the minimum uh, illness disorder problem maximum mental so this is a normal mental health and this area shows uh, uh only Uh, the problematic mental health so this area shows no mental health issues and no physical health issues this area is completely normal uh, and this uh, area of graph shows a completely normal spectrum of 
uh, health. This one shows uh, has a serious diagnosable illness but copes well and has positive mental health. And this one has diagnosable mental health, a uh, mental illness, and has poor mental health. This one is no diagnosable illness but uh, or disorder, but has poor mental health. So these are different models to explain the mental health the issues and the more, uh, disorders, the severity of the disorders. Then uh, next impact on studies and academic performance. This is a very important topic that teachers should definitely consider during if a student is behaving oddly or if, uh, going through something. They should consider. Uh, uh, they should consider these issues, these issues, and they should counsel them, and uh, you know, uh, uh, guide them about the support options available. Consider the impact that mental health can have on a student, emotions, thought processes, and cognition, physical symptoms, behavior, ability to complete activities of daily living, ability to focus on their academic studies, ability to engage with the peers, academic staff, and make connections. So. These all are the components that, uh, if any of them get deranged or get disturbed, that student definitely will go to a psychiatric issue uh, and will not be able to, you know, make progress uh, uh, as compared to the students that are normal. So these should these uh, aspects should not be ignored. So the next is roles and responsibilities. Uh, it is. A very uh, you know individual responsibility that uh, if a person is going through something he should carry the closest friends or relatives or the uh, siblings or friends or the spouse so it is their responsibility as well to you know speak about it but the uh, responsibility of the friend family and spouse and the teachers as well that if they notice anything about uh, anything odd about a student, about their child, about their spouse, about their friend, they should, you know, uh, uh, approach them and ask them what's going wrong with you and or whatever you're going through. You can share it. You uh, can make them feel supported or make them comfortable enough to talk about it. So finding help when you need it. So uh, most of students, you know, uh, seek immediate, uh, you know, uh, immediate solutions to the problems they have, but it is uh, okay not to have all the answers right away. You might be dealing with the multiple issues or the first problem that comes up might not be the biggest one you are the facing. So if um, uh, but a person is going through some financial stress or anything else going on, he uh, uh, if, uh, the secondary response might be he's you know, getting angry or he's not showing up in classes or he's having trouble relationship. So, this is a secondary effect, but the primary effect is uh, that he is not mentally okay. He is going through something. Uh, mostly people see the secondary effects of the mental illnesses that uh, the person, how is the person responding to the relationships, how the person is responding to the academics. So this is not the actual problem. The actual problem is the mental health. The person is going through something uh, that the main reason uh, uh, why uh, there's the main reason uh, that the person is not, you know, uh, actively or properly engaging with the relationship or engaging with academic activities. So the main problem, the first problem is the mental health or the actual reason of the problem. And the next one is the secondary, that the person, you know, does not have problem with the relationship, but that in that situation, uh, that situation triggers him or her to, you know, react this way. So this is the, you know, a dual responsibility on the person and the, you know, uh, the next person who is uh, close to that, you know, uh, affected person that if a child is not behaving well, it's child responsibility as well to, uh, you know, speak about it. And the parent, the main responsibility is on the parent. If the child is minor, the parent should, you know, uh, talk to the children politely uh, and take him to the doctor so it is you know uh, not a thing that we cannot ignore uh, we should not take it lighter uh, people you know uh, die due to severity of these diseases uh, they become suicidal they do not if they do not seek help so this is very important if you see any of your uh, family member or friends suffering 
you should help them you should you know guide them about the resources and uh, keep an eye on them get some help from your teacher if your teachers offer to help they need to make sure of the few things first you need to know have enough time amid their other responsibilities to assist you properly you can ask if you are student as a student you can talk to your teacher because uh, uh, they know better resources than you so they could uh, they can guide you better uh, they must ensure they helping you doesn't clash with their other roles they should also have access to the suitable advice and support if they still have an, uh, ongoing activities they can all uh, always reach out to the school, uh, school student support and well-being uh, services so do not hesitate to help when you need it either you are student either you are teacher or either uh, whoever professional you are you should uh, you know do not seek for help whenever you need it so how you can seek help you can speak up hello take dr dr to... muhammad first yes, there's, yes. there's a couple of questions um first there's one can you explain ocd why it's no longer classified as a psycho psychosis uh, i don't think so that it's not classified as ocd is uh, like you know obsessive compulsive disorder in which a person you know gets uh, uh, uh gets too much picky or specific or if uh, for example uh he uh, or she becomes uh, you know too much in god with the doubt that he cannot trust up any person or if, for example let's take an example that if a person washes his hands and uh, he you know uses soap and the hand wash and antibacterial soap or whatever use and still after that he thinks that his hands are not clean or uh, he should clean it again or wash it again he washes again second time and third time and you know every time he washes hands he, he remains doubtful about his hands this is a very simple example of ocd that a person gets obsessed with something and you know uh, they, uh, gets too hard about that thing so i don't think so that uh, about uh, you know in my uh, knowledge or uh, in you know to the date i do not know that it, it is excluded from the psychiatric issues but i think this is a problematic thing that ocd should be treated and should uh, uh, mostly it start in early age and the people ignore it as uh, you know it's not a seen problematic but as the person grows older and older and the person grows at of a certain age that thing you know definitely start uh, irritating others or other his family members or his friends or spouse uh, it is you know uh, one day or the other that if a person is having psychiatric issues first of all the person gets disturbed by himself uh, and eventually that thing definitely going to disturb his family his friends or his closest ones that uh, those who are living with him so ocd is uh, something that we need to uh, you know work on it is not a normal thing that we feel obsessed about but a little thing that we you know Uh, get too much in god or too much doubtful about anything that's not a normal thing doubt is okay but you know uh, too much being doubtful is not a good thing so ocd uh, is treatable as well next question and, please and then there's another question from lerato when mental illness is identified after 30 years old can it be classified as a bipolar illness and can it be cured yes definitely uh, i am speaking uh, talking here about that the most inc- uh, the incidence of the most uh, uh, mental health issues that most of the people face them in their early 20s or late 20s but if uh, that these diseases can occur at any age if uh, they are uh, you know getting diagnosed at 30 or after 40 this is definitely treatable or uh, any kind of disease that is a psychiatric issue or he or she a person any of uh, them is they having uh there are a variety of options available for them uh, at any age they can get it diagnosed they can get it treated they can have psychological session with the psychologist they can have medicines for that and other uh, you know remedies that help them to treat or get out of that situation so yeah that is treatable as next question are you able to put into chat the actual powerpoint presentation that you're using so so the students can download it actually i have sent the uh, presentation to the course i communicate uh, uh, i can send the uh, presentation again 
but I will try if the chat allows to upload. Let me check. Yeah, you have to make sure you send it to everyone and then upload the, uh, you would have to upload the presentation, the file of the presentation. Okay, I will upload at the end of the lecture. Okay, uh, perfect. Hopefully, hopefully it will allow me to attach it. And uh, let me let's see, um, can mental health problems be inherited or passed from one generation to another? It is not certainly inherited, but in some situations that uh, some studies say that there is a predisposition of mental health issues, uh, like some of the uh, patients that if they have, you know, uh, have bipolar disease, they might have genetic predisposition of that disease uh, that might show up, you know, in the later stages of life. But it is not, you know, proven or uh, too much uh, clear that a genetic predisposition or inheritance of the mental health disease. Most of them are acquired or, you know, having, uh, uh, they mainly take root from the social aspect, from the uh, emotional aspect, aspect, from the social aspects of, from the household issues. But these are main, uh, you know, uh, reasons that a person may have a mental health issues. But I don't think so that uh, this is uh, too much rooted in the genes. Uh, the main issue is the present day life, the acquired issues that leads to a person that leads to a person to the mental health issues if it remains unchecked or untreated. And what are some of the key considerations for creating a mentally healthy working environment? Uh, sorry, uh, I, I can't hear you. Oh, so you... what are what are some key considerations to create a healthy working environment for mental health? Uh, I think uh, that the uh, you know a very cooperative environment is that in which uh, listening uh, matters a lot. If a person uh, is employed, uh, the most of you know workload is on the junior employees. Uh, the commun mainly communication and listening to the problems of your, you know, the other colleagues and the staff is the major key. That if uh, if the you know colleagues don't talk about if uh, it uh, about the problem they are having or the uh, you know boss is being too bossy, so these kind of situations lead to you know a very tense environment. A friendly environment can be you know created if. Uh, you know, uh, the whole team, uh, the whole employers, uh, the whole employers and the employees, they, you know, uh, work cooperatively and they communicate with each other instead of, you know, a, having a, an air of too much bossy. Uh, if, if that a person, if either the employer or employee, besides their main role as, uh, you know, the main professional role, they should be, you know, uh, uh, working as a team as a family that uh, taking all the social aspects into consideration, like empathy is, for example, a, a main one, that a person is having uh, too much workload, uh, the employer should, you know, uh, divide the work into other colleagues as well, or give him rest or break or recreational activities. So this is a very uh, dynamic person or uh, dynamic situation in which a person so this is a very uh, collective, uh, uh, you know, effort that employees and the employer both uh, uh, should consider the social aspect of uh, mental health if they are running a company or sort of thing. But if there is tension, uh, uh, social tension between either of employees or employers, they might uh, a psychological session or psychologist session, a group session with a psychologist might be helpful if there is something wrong or employees getting agitated or uh, uh, agitated to be without any reason, if their, uh, you know, salary is okay uh, and everything is good, but the employees are not satisfied, getting satisfied or the employee is not satisfied, uh, the communication is not good or uh, the environment is too tense, the group therapy or group session with a psychologist, even one time is maybe uh, helpful. Uh, 
uh, for creating a positive, you know, uh, work environment. Next question, please. There are a lot of questions coming into chat. Uh, there are some questions about stress, whether it's a mental health problem or a mental health illness, and how can one manage stress? Okay, there are different ways to manage stress. Uh, I will talk about it uh, in the next slides as well. So there are different ways to cope up with the stress, like you know, uh, different maneuvers that we can take to manage stress, like uh, day breathing uh, and meditation and home remedies or without any medication. There are certain maneuvers that help you know uh, to cope up with the stress. Uh, so uh, I will talk about it in the next slide, but let's finish finish this quickly. So we will take the next questions after this, this, okay? Perfect. Okay, great. So uh, how can, uh, how you can seek help, speak up, take the time to express your feelings, take time to make others understand your perspective, seek empathy, not dismissal, strive to feel supported, don't hesitate to ask for referrals when necessary, but you should, should shouldn't expect. Or that all of your problems will be solved instantly. Others cannot solve your problems uh, at once or all of them. So uh, a person should not expect that or expect this thing at the least. The others will take a responsibility for your feelings or actions. If a person is going through a grief or something that his personal thing that he's experiencing that issue, but it's our responsibility to have some empathy for him but that person should know that uh, it's not other's fault that he's going through this. But, you know, uh, in certain situations, like if a person is, you know, not mentally okay, he or she starts blaming others for their own actions as well. That's not normal that, you know, a uh, sick person's behavior. We all know that. Uh, this slide is not moving again. Okay. We are going to talk about the sign and symptoms in detail. Uh, spotting the red flags early on here, what you should know we look for in terms of mental health and physical health. So there are some questions uh, that you can ask yourself uh, either you are healthy or mentally okay or whether you are not. So question yourself. I'm going to ask them, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, read out some questions for you. Uh, emotional cues. Are you feeling worthless or emo extremely happy all of a sudden? Are you going through rapid mood swings, experiencing anxiety or fear or constantly irritated? And uh, I'm going to say it again that anxiety or fear or uh, sadness uh, or stress that lasts for a while, uh, for a few hours, for a few days, after a loss or after anything that's completely normal. But if these things last more than three weeks, that's not normal. That definitely got converted into something problematic. Next question is, are you feeling overwhelmed and out of control? So if ask yourself emotional cues, answer these, uh, these, of, uh, your, uh, these questions by yourself then you will see where are you standing in your mental health spectrum. Uh, next one is cognitive cues. Do you find it difficult to concentrate or get easily distracted? Are your thoughts too slow or too fast? Do you have hard time making decisions? Or are you falling into negative thinking patterns? Are you blaming others more? Lacking confidence, thinking about harming yourself or being suspicious of others? Being too much suspicious of others or doubtful uh, about others is a sort of OCD. So next is behavior cues. If uh, are you lacking motivation or crying a lot? Are you less active, disorganized, or socially withdrawn? Do you find it hard to sleep or balance your life and work, school? Are you constantly agitated, unable to relax, harming yourself? or relying more on alcohol and drugs? Are you noticing changes in your personality? 
these are the behavior cues. Uh, answer these questions by yourself and you will see where are you standing. I will attach an email at the end of the I think we just lost our presenter. The connection looks like it, it disconnected. Welcome. Oh, there you are. Welcome back. Okay, uh, good. I think there was connection to you. Yes. Can you, see, can you see my screen now? Yep. No, cannot see your screen yet. Uh, okay. My screen is visible now. Yes. So we were talking about the behavioral cues. Uh, I'm attaching an email at the end of the presentation. So you can take a screenshot of these questions. And if you answer these questions by yourself and you're uh, thinking that these answers are problematic for yourself, you can discuss it with me or you know consult with uh, anything that is going on. So this is not a, just a presentation, it, uh, you know, uh, an open session uh, about the mental health. Physical cues, are you finding, uh, are you always tired? lethargic, nauseous, shaking, or having heart palpitations. These are symptoms of anxiety or panic attack. Are you finding it hard to breathe or noticing significant weight loss or gain? So these are physical cues as well. That a person, uh, if he or she is having, you know, normal meals, uh, having normal exercise, but despite of that, he or she is get uh, uh you know going through a significant weight loss or weight gain without trying that can be also a red flag so uh, next is changes in your academic habits are you frequently late or absent uh, is your morale low do you find it difficult to organize your work or notice a change in your study habits and academic performance are you struggling to communicate or cooperate with others are you having problems concentrating, making decisions or remembering things. Uh, is it visible now? Sorry, Dr. Lambert, my connectivity sucks. Really, it is, you know, getting poor. Uh, okay, we, we can see you and hear you now. Go ahead and continue. Okay, great. So we were talking about the questions that we can ask ourselves about the mental health. We are always standing at the spectrum of mental health issues. So uh, are you behaving in a way that might uh, that might worry others? How do you feel you are coming across? Is there more information that could help you understand the situation? Are you differently than how you usually do? Do you think your teachers need more details from you? Should your teachers seek additional information from other staff? Would it be beneficial to involve someone else in the situation? So these all are the questions that we, should, we all should ask ourselves uh, that uh, where are we standing uh, at this situation? Some of the people are going through uh, mental issues, but they do not, you know, notice about it unless others, you know, tell them that uh, you are behaving differently or you, uh, you are acting too angry or you being too sad or you being too antisocial. So these are questions that we can ask ourselves and, you know, uh, get to know ourselves, ourselves more. So seek help if you are noticing any of these signs. It's important to reach out and ask for help. You're not alone and there are resources available to support you. Reach out to the nearest medical professional in your access. Okay, uh, these are the signs and symptoms. So I'm going to next. Getting help in non-urgent situations. So this is a teacher-student scenario and the next one is the parent, children, and spouse scenario. Uh, I will uh, go through, uh, you know, a uh, I will have a, an overview of that, but I will not go through the details. I will share the presentation so you guys can read it by yourself. So uh, there is a non-urgent situation versus an urgent situation. In the non-urgent situation, we can you know alleviate the situation by just talking about it. But in the urgent situation, their uh, medical intervention is necessary. That uh, 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 mere psychiatric uh, do, uh, uh, session or uh, heartfelt conversation is 
isn't you know sufficient so we de definitely need the medical intervention that urgent uh, uh, mode of so getting help sometimes you may need extra help and it's crucial for your teachers to know their abilities and roles and providing you that assistance but most of time the problems that you face may not be urgent even if you may, might feel distressed or visibly upset Talking to teacher about your issues and knowing about the available resources can make a huge difference. The schools that uh, this is, I don't know, uh, uh, the university offers uh, disability and well-being service, but I'm sure that there are uh, options or they will be uh, they will offer. Uh, if you uh, and if any of you is going through something or if you discuss about them uh, about to the teacher to the staff, they will definitely have guide you about the things. So you might be feeling emotional distress due to various reasons such as feeling depressed, anxious problems, experiencing health issues, feeling stressed about relationships, feeling homesick, feeling lonely and isolated, dealing with grief, struggling with self-esteem. These all are the issues that most of the teenagers and twenties, uh, in the adults in the twenties, uh, suffer, having money problems. But remember, these situations are usually not deemed urgent unless there is an immediate risk to you or the others. So these are non-urgent problems that can be discussed, you know, uh, by conversation, by having a chat, by you know, opening up to someone, uh, to your close, your friends, your family, and talking about these problems. But if a person is, you know, getting too much into the issues, uh, he's, uh, he or she is getting psychotic. He or uh, she, you know, talking to her themselves and, uh, uh, you know, getting violent. So this is not uh, non-urgent, but is rather an emergency so you should definitely seek help or support uh, the hard hotline numbers available like 911 or different uh, your native uh, hotline numbers that uh, emergency number that can you know help you in that kind of situation so what your teachers can do for you listen to you give you time to talk understand the situation from your perspective be sympathetic and not dismissive help you feel supported refer you to the appropriate resources these, these are the things that your teachers can do for you, nothing more and nothing less. Hear what your teachers can do for you, solve your problems, take responsibility for the emotional state. So these are, you know, this is a strictly teacher-student scenario. Uh, you can, if you are having any sort of issue that is related to your academic, your uh, student life, you can discuss it with, with your teacher. But if you're going through something personal, or you know having family issues you should better uh, talk about it with your parents your children either your spouse uh, spouse so uh, this is another non urgent scenario in which uh, you know uh, these factors uh, uh, emotional distress are common but what your uh, spouse can do listen to you give you time to talk understand the situation from your perspective be empathetic and not dismissive, help you feel supported, refer to the profit source. So if a person is going through something, his or her spouse should know that he is suffering or he is going through, he or she is going through something. So uh, they should, uh, you know, uh, help you see a doctor or support you emotionally and socially so you recover, uh, you know, quickly. Here is what your parents or spouse can't do for you. They cannot solve your problems. They cannot take responsibility for your emotional state, but you know they can definitely uh, offer some uh, help uh, if you're going through financial issues. Your parents can uh, sub, uh, offer sometimes financial support, or if you are having any sort of connection, uh, you know, uh, job issues or referral issues. So your parents might have connections, and they might you know get uh, referrals for that. You know, sometimes we all need uh, references. Uh, to put on our CV that I did work here and uh, work there and uh, I have, you know, these, uh, this portfolio. So connections, most of the time your parents have connections, they can help you in this kind of situation. Uh, so all uh, these things depends upon speaking up. If you speak up to their spouse, your children, your parents, your teachers, they can help you then only. If you do not speak or uh, do not talk about it, they are definitely not going to help you. So, if uh, is there any question related to this?
so offering support in urgent situations so we will see these uh, all three are most uh, common uh, the main issues of distress is common in all of the three scenarios uh, so the number one is as a student you believe you or one of your peers might be at risk of harming yourself or others this is an urgent situation you may know a need to seek immediate help if you or your fellow student is uh, potentially at risk uh, serious risk of self harm it is a very serious uh, issue and uh, urgent situation to seek help has become totally non functional acting violently or threatening harm to people or property appears very disoriented and out of touch with reality voices of force or plans of society these are serious situations that a person uh, uh, can be going through and you can help them uh, only by uh, calling your emergency services so these uh, uh, distress conditions are common in all these of the scenarios and these are the urgent situations in which you cannot help them so it should be better if you call your emergency services so in all situations stay calm it's vital to keep your composure to handle the situation effectively engage if safe if the person is getting too much violent it is not safe to get near to that person so it would be much better if uh, you uh, you just lock him in uh, in a room and call emergency services so you should record the details uh, uh, that a person is making this kind of statement or is person behaving uh, this way or is getting too violent too sad or too much delusional or too much non functional uh, consider reporting uh, you should report to your teacher your supervisor uh, and your nearest uh, adult or nearest mature person available nearest uh, medical professional available safety first always prioritize your safety and that of others present at the scene have backup if possible have a trusted individual authority as a backup to help manage the situation seek support after the immediate crisis handled ensure you get the support you need so if you uh, if you have experienced or seen a traumatic uh, you know road accident or something or you seen something terrible you should definitely seek a psychological session uh, with a psychologist you should speak about that and uh, they will help you you know definitely process, they will help you uh, how you can process these emotions next is follow up it is important to follow up on agreed action plans or advice given continue to monitor the situation and seek help when necessary so this uh, is uh, important either either you are uh, talking about your own self your children your fellows your friends so this uh, you know applies to all remember in any situation where there is an immediate risk of harm don't hesitate to contact emergency services in your local area the us dial 911 in uk dial triple 9 in africa it varies by country but south africa for instance dial 112 so treatment options available there are variety of treatment options available depending on the severity of the disease so i will talk about them one by one therapy number one is therapy mostly we refer it to psychotherapy cognitive behavioral therapy dialectical behavior therapy dbt cbt and psychotherapy so mostly uh, psychotherapy is given because most of the cases are mild and people recover with the different with uh, some sessions with the psychologist and they are good to go the next is medication if the person is not getting recovered with the sessions just by talking or sharing things then the next step is adding medications to uh, you know to help him the situation there are antidepressants available there are antipsychotics available there are mood stabilizers available antidepressants are for those uh, who you know uh, stay in the low, low mood for a long time antipsychotics are available for persons who are uh, getting you know too much violent or getting seizures or uh, having too much panic attack mood stabilizers are for those uh, you know uh, who are behaving uh, having bipolar disorder or behaving very odd like you know uh, get too much happy at the moment and the next moment they are too much sad so this is the sort of bpd most available or for that purpose lifestyle modifications self care practices stress management exercise and nutrition uh, 
सेल्फ केयर प्रैक्टिस आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एक्सरसाइज इज ऑल्सो वेरी हेल्पफुल टू यू नो कोप अप विद स्ट्रेस एंड अदर मेंटल हेल्थ इश्यूज इट इज इट डेफिनेटली हेल्प हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन इंटेंसिव प्रोग्राम दीज आर फॉर द एडवांस पेशेंट रेजिडेंशियल ट्रीटमेंट पार्शल ट्रीटमेंट प्रोग्राम पार्शल हॉस्पिटल प्रोग्राम के विच समाइम्स अ पेशेंट स्टेज इन हॉस्पिटल एंड गेट सेशन एंड गेट ट्रीटमेंट and then gets to start and that after a certain period of time he gets uh, he or she gets uh, admitted again so uh, this uh, your session goes on and on intensive outpatient programs in which a patient uh, from the you know day care in which a person gets uh, counseled with a uh, uh, from a psychologist and given medications uh, and uh, he will he said he or she is advised for a follow up the next is neuromodulation technique if psychotherapy is failing if the medication is failing and the depression is too much resistant to medi- uh, medicines or the other illnesses are resistant to medicines and the behavioral therapy or the uh, dbtt so neuromodulation techniques are uh, helpful in that kind of situations electroconvulsive therapy ect transcranial magnetic stimulation tms and ect are very helpful these are latest treatments in the conditions where drug therapy and the uh, psychotherapy is failing so uh, these therapies will be uh, given in the advanced patients with severe mental health issues so the next is online and digital interventions telepsychiatry and online therapy is uh, you know a leading uh, uh, intervention these days as people uh, uh, talk to the remote uh, psychiatrists and online uh, get an online sessions with psychologists so support for students at the university level most of the students are mature enough to talk to a doctor get appointment and talk about it uh, there are emergency hotlines available if you call them they will direct you uh, and help you uh, or guide you to how to handle the situation if there is emergency they will definitely dispatch a security services or ambulance towards that center local crisis centers uh, there are a uh, lot of walking clinics available in most of the areas where you can see help text or chat help lines in uh, some of the online he- psychological psychiatric websites offer text or chat help lines in which you can uh, you know text your problems and uh, you can counsel uh, by the psychiatric or psychologist online by text or chat help lines supportive friends or family reach out to trusted friends or family members who can provide immediate support during a mental health emergency they can help you stay calm accompanying you to seek professional help or assist in contacting emergency services so besides the uh, therapy supportive family or friends is very important to uh, a person to a person uh, that is going through something and uh, these things you know expedite his treatment uh, uh, affect uh, affect him of his treatment so that person gets recovered quickly if he uh, have a positive response or have positive positive support from his family or friends so remember if you you or some someone you know is in immediate danger experiencing life threatening emergency call the emergency services in your country right now okay so i already told you there are situations non urgent and urgent so in non urgent situations just talking about it is sufficient uh, to help uh, the person and to solve the issues but in the urgent situation you cannot handle of all of that mess you should call uh, emergency hotline i have mentioned this us uh, national suicide prevention lifeline uh, uk uh, canada australia new zealand india germany france spain so i have selected some of these helplines that might be helpful in your area if you are seeing uh, experiencing or seeing someone who is experiencing this kind of emergency so dr lambert how much time is remaining can you please tell 